Big the country. G big country? Why? Because he used to, because, you know, guards that don't play defense, they always tell bigs to show. So I would show, and big country be 15 feet away, and I would have to rotate back. And he had the ugliest Donald uh, Duckworth one-hand jumper. He shoot it, and it always go in. And so halftime, I'm looking at the stats. Shaq 15, big country 26. I'm like, <laughs> if you got Shaq singing your praises, you're doing something right. But nowadays, Bryant Reeves is a player best known for his fitting nickname of Big Country, and not his ability. There's probably a lot of people that think he's forgotten for a reason, but he deserves his shine alone for briefly being the face of the expansion Vancouver Grizzlies. A true center coming off a dominant career at Oklahoma State was then made the first ever rookie drafted by Vancouver. His career started with a lot of promise, as he improved in each of his first three seasons, was one of the best offensive centers in the league at the time, and looked to be in the midst of forming a great duo with forward Sharif Abdurrahim in Vancouver. But weight issues after the lockout led to chronic injuries that forced him out of the league after just six years. Yet, when he was at his best, he had a great post game with an unexpectedly soft touch around the rim for someone his size, along with solid court vision. But with that being said, he was one of the worst defensive big men of all time, and that definitely works against him. But he wasn't the only defensive liability on those early Grizzlies teams. And no, he's not a forgotten great, but Bryant Reeves was no slouch. And when he was healthy, anyone could be in for a long night when Big Country came to town. And that's why he needs to continue to get his recognition, and will, on today's episode. Let's jog your memory. An Oklahoma native, Bryant Reeves grew up in small town Gans, Oklahoma, where he attended Gans High School and played for the team fittingly named the Grizzlies. But Reeves had an unlikely high school career. He didn't play for a powerhouse school against top competition or for a legendary coach. In fact, his high school team consisted of just seven total players and he had nine different coaches during the four years he was there. And for as strong as Reeves was, this didn't come from a weightlifting routine as his school didn't even have weights. It was little surprise that Reeves remained in state and attended Oklahoma State under head coach Eddie Sutton. And Reeves said that Sutton was a main reason he chose the Cowboys. When Reeves came to Oklahoma as a freshman, that's all he was, Bryant Reeves, until teammate Byron Houston gave him the nickname Big Country. There's differing reports on when it was given, whether it was during his first time on a plane or just during a summer pickup game before his freshman year, but it was Houston who gave it to him and it stuck. The Cowboys' original plan was to redshirt Reeves, as when he arrived to Stillwater, he was very raw talent, who was not in the shape necessary for high-level D1 basketball, but Reeves showed his commitment to improvement whether it was weightlifting or basketball in general, as he impressed his strength coach and his head coach with his incredible progress, and the rest is history. He would score 16 points in his first game, and although he was a man amongst boys during his college years, he was the baby as a freshman, as he was the only non-senior in the starting lineup, and would still finish as the team's second best rebounder while shooting over 52%. The Cowboys would start the year 20-0, and would rank as high as number two in the nation but they would go 4-6 the rest of the way to limp to a 24-6 record. They would make it to the Big 8 championship game, but lose to Kansas. However, they would still enter the NCAA tournament as a two-seed. A first-round blowout of Georgia Southern would see Reeves put up 12 points and 11 rebounds on 50% shooting, and a second-round defeat of Tulane would see him put up just 6 points on 2 of 3 shooting, while also pulling down 8 rebounds. The Sweet 16 would end in a loss to the Michigan Wolverines and their Fab 5, but it was close as the Cowboys lost by just 3 points. Reeves would again play well with 9 points and 5 rebounds on 4 of 7 shooting, but he just wasn't the focal point yet. However, his freshman season saw him average about 8 points, 5 rebounds, and half a block per game. Going into his 93 sophomore season, he was the team's only returning starter, so expectations had skyrocketed. The Cowboys featured a great backcourt of Brooks Thompson and Randy Rutherford, but Reeves was the team's star as he had upped his numbers across the board to lead the team in scoring, rebounding, field goal percentage, and blocks. And for reference of how good of a college player he already was during his sophomore season, he led the Big 8 conference in scoring, rebounding, and field goal percentage. The last player to do that at the time? Wilt Chamberlain with Kansas in 1958. After losing nearly all their starters, the Cowboys began the year unranked. They would get off to an 8-1 start, with their biggest win coming about a month later versus rival Oklahoma. But the most memorable win for Reeves came in a February 24th win versus Missouri, when he hit a half-court buzzer beater to send the game to overtime. 
which the Cowboys would go on to win. Reeves' improved play would earn him a first-team all-conference selection and see him named Big 8 Player of the Year. Although Oklahoma State would finish the year at just 19-7 and, and lose in the first round of the Big 8 tournament. Going into the NCAA tournament as a 5 seed, the Cowboys would defeat Marquette in round 1 behind 26-10 and 10 on 12-19 of 19 shooting from Reeves, but they would be knocked out by Louisville in the second round as Reeves took just 8 shots to finish with 14 points and 9 rebounds. And for his regular season, Reeves put up about 19.5 points, 10 rebounds, and 1.5 blocks per game. The Cowboys were once again a team featuring an experienced starting lineup, as 4 out of 5 players were upperclassmen going into 94. Reeves again led the team in scoring and rebounding, and would put up a career-high 2.1 blocks per game. He would again lead the conference in rebounding and field goal percentage, and would finish 5th in scoring. Oklahoma started the year as the 10th ranked team in the nation, however after a 4-0 start, they would go 4-4 in their next 8 and fall out of the national rankings. They would return near the end of the year, as with a 21-8 record, they finished ranked 21st in the nation. They would have an improved Big 8 tournament, as they made it back to the championship game, but would lose to Nebraska. The Cowboys entered the tournament as a 4 seed, and would defeat New Mexico State in the first round. However, Reeves would have just 11 points and 6 rebounds on 5 shots, as Rutherford dominated with 28 points. But they would lose in the second round after a furious second half comeback from Tulsa in a game where Reeves had 32 points on over 58% shooting and 4 blocks. Reeves ended the year averaging about 21 points, 9.5 rebounds, and 2 blocks per game, as he was again named first team all-conference. Reeves' 95 senior season was his most successful as a cowboy. He and Rutherford formed a lethal inside-outside duo that averaged over 40 points combined. Reeves continued to lead the team in scoring, rebounding, field goal percentage, and blocks, and would again lead the conference in total points, rebounds, and field goal percentage. But he also led the conference in made free throws for the third straight year. And he did that while still leaving a lot of points at the line, as this was the first time in his career shooting over 65% from the stripe. The Cowboys started as the 19th ranked team in the nation, but fell out of the top 25 quickly after losing two of three at the Great Alaska Shootout. And it would take them about two and a half months to re-enter the top 25. Overall, they would finish the year at 20 and nine, ranked 18th in the nation, and Reeves' season would see him drop at least 33 points five times, including 33 points and 20 rebounds in an upset of number two Kansas on February 6th. And even though they had two of the nation's top players, they didn't have much else, so they seemed destined for another early tournament exit. But that's not what happened. First, they would finally get the monkey off their back by winning the Big 8 championship with three convincing wins as they entered the NCAA tournament as a four seed, where Big Country showed that he was one of the best bigs in the country. Round one would be a victory over Drexel, with Reeves putting up 21 and 11, along with three blocks, before fouling out. Round two brought Alabama, led by Antonio McDice, who put up 22 and 17. But Reeves would answer with a game-high 26 on over 52% shooting, to go along with seven rebounds, as the Cowboys advanced. The Sweet 16 brought top-seeded Wake Forest and superstar Tim Duncan, Duncan would put up 12 points and 22 rebounds, while Reeves struggled with just 15 points and 9 rebounds on 4 of 15 shooting. Luckily, 23 points and 11 rebounds from Rutherford would be the difference, as the Cowboys advanced to the Elite 8, where another elite big man was waiting, in UMass's Marcus Camby. But he would manage just 6 points on 2 of 10 shooting before fouling out, as he had no answer for a dominant performance from Reeves. Reeves would put up a game-high 24 points and 10 rebounds in an easy win for Oklahoma State, setting up a Final Four matchup versus UCLA. But this is where the Cowboys' luck ran out. Reeves again played great, with a game-high 25 on 50% shooting along with 9 boards, but the rest of the starters went cold, as UCLA won easily. But Reeves' senior season ended with him averaging about 21.5 points, 9.5 rebounds, and 1.5 blocks per game as he was again named first team all-conference and conference player of the year. But that was it for his four years, and he would enter the 95 NBA draft, which featured two brand new teams north of the border. With the sixth pick in the 1995 NBA draft, the Vancouver Grizzlies select Bryant Reeves from Oklahoma State University. Reeves would become the first rookie selection by the expansion Vancouver Grizzlies, as he was the first college upperclassman drafted. And as is the case with an expansion team, overall expectations were quite low. However, expectations on their new rookie were quite high. 
Reeves joined a team who had veterans Greg Anthony and Blue Edwards acting as their top players, as these three would be the team's top scorers, with Reeves also finishing second on the team in rebounding. The Grizzlies shocked a lot of people by starting the year 2-0, with Reeves playing limited minutes off the bench. But this wouldn't last long, and if you're wondering if I'm talking about the Grizzlies winning or Reeves coming off the bench, I'm talking about both. After these two wins, the Grizzlies would go on a 19 game losing streak. They would continue to lose more than they would win before setting a new franchise record with 23 straight losses beginning in mid-February as overall they finished with a league worst 15 and 67 record. And it was during that first losing streak that Reeves became a full-time starter. And although he wasn't a dominant force, he was solid. He would hit double figures in 53 games, including 16 games with at least 20, while also recording 21 double-doubles and a career-high 7 blocks in an April 12th win versus Sacramento. Among rookies, he would finish 8th in scoring and 4th in rebounds, which would get him named 2nd team all-rookie. But Reeves was popular, as the Grizzlies had ran a promo in January where they offered free tickets to any fan willing to shave their hair into his trademark crew cut. Expecting a couple hundred people to show, they got a couple thousand instead. But their popular rookie season ended with him averaging about 13.5 points, 7.5 rebounds, and half a block per game. The Grizzlies brought in some help for Reeves in the form of a 6'9 power forward out of Cal named Sharif Abdurrahim, as the Grizzlies were hoping to form a dominant frontcourt duo, and these two looked to be on their way, but Abdurrahim was quickly emerging as the better of the two. Nonetheless, they were the team's best scorers and rebounders, but the team got less effective seasons from Edwards and Anthony, and although they would get a good year from Anthony Peeler, who they traded for in the offseason, this team was still far from being a threat. They began the year at 3-19, and, and when they were sitting at 8-35 and on January 25th, head coach Brian Winters was fired and replaced with GM Stu Jackson. But he didn't fare any better, as he went 6-33 and the rest of the way, which included winning 3 of their final 28 games. But Reeves had improved. He was playing a career high in minutes, while nearly shooting 49%. He had upped his averages and was 8th among centers in scoring. He would have 56 games in double figures and 23 double-doubles. But this year he would have at least 30 points 7 times, including 33 points and a career high 18 rebounds in a February 2nd win versus Boston. But the Grizzlies had regressed and were the worst team in the league for the second year at 14 and 38. And Reeves second season saw him average about 16 points, 8 rebounds and a block per game. Vancouver needed a point guard and selected Antonio Daniels fourth overall in the 97 draft. However, he wouldn't be nearly as impactful as their previous two picks and the Grizzlies were still trying to find their coach, as this year they'd be led by Brian Hill. But they had committed to Reeves, as he signed a 6-year, $65 million extension in the offseason, and he was delivering. Although Abdur Rahim was continuing to pull away as the best player, Reeves put up career highs in scoring, blocks, and field goal percentage, as the two combined for nearly 40 per game. Reeves would even finish ranked 10th in the league in field goal percentage, and was the 9th best scorer among centers. His career year would see him put up double figures in 55 games, record 18 double-doubles, and drop a career-high 41 points on 14 of 21 shooting in a January 15th loss to Boston. The Grizzlies traded Peeler around the trade deadline for the T-Wolves' Doug West, and would also get half a season out of a 35-year-old Otis Thorpe, but they just weren't making any improvements. They would record more than two wins in a row just once, and would also go on a 13-game losing streak as they finished at 19-63. and 63. And after two years with a bottom of the league offense and decent defense, they flipped and now had the 11th ranked scoring offense and second worst scoring defense. They weren't the worst team in the league, but they were still at the bottom. And for the regular season, Reeves put up about 16.5 points, 8 rebounds, and 1 assist per game. But little did fans know, they had just seen the best of big country. After the season, the NBA lockout began and it occurred throughout the remainder of 1998, which was the worst thing to happen to Reeves as it gave him ample time to go home and get away from basketball. But he also got away from the team and the facilities he needed to stay in shape, and it didn't help that he reportedly never had a good diet. His teammates would even later say that he would routinely show up out of shape and then play himself back into shape each year. But with the lockout postponing the season until early February, that was over three months of extra weight that Reeves put on with significantly less time to play it off. The Grizzlies had remedied the Daniels pick by selecting Arizona's Mike Bibby in the 98 draft, who would have a great rookie year for the team, along with another great year from Abdur Rahim. But Reeves, 
who normally hovered around 280 pounds, was reportedly 315 pounds when he arrived for training camp after the lockout. And this extra weight on his already massive frame was difficult on his knees. He would play most of the first half of the year, appearing in 25 games, but starting only 14, as his production was way down. He wasn't able to handle his regular minutes and would record just two games with at least 20 points and a single double-double on a career low 40.6% shooting. However, his two 20-point games were a 21.9 rebound performance followed by a 28.13 rebound performance in mid-March. But then he would play just one more game before the knee pain was too much and he would have surgery on his right knee which would shut him down for the remainder of the year. The Grizzlies were bad, going just 5-20 with Reeves but went even worse 3-22 without him, as they finished with an 8-42 record, and Reeves' short year saw him put up about 11 points, 5.5 rebounds, and half a block per game. So at this point, the Grizzlies were going into their fifth year of existence and had been historically bad, and fan interest was really starting to dwindle. So they needed a player who could inject life and excitement into the franchise, and they would select Maryland's high-flying point guard Steve Francis second overall. But Francis didn't want to play for the team, and it didn't make a lot of sense for him, with the season Bibby had just wrapped up. So after it was clear that he wasn't going to be suiting up for the Grizzlies, Francis was traded to the Rockets on August 27th for a massive package including picks and players like Michael Dickerson and Othella Harrington. Reeves was hobbled all year. His knee continued to bother him, and the pain made it difficult for him to get into playing shape. His minutes continued to drop, and although he was a starter, he was no longer a focal point of the offense and had become nothing more than a starting center playing his role, as his scoring dropped to single figures, but he did improve his shooting to nearly 45%. Reeves would manage just 25 games in double figures and three double doubles, but he would have a throwback performance in a March 12th loss to Seattle, when he put up 31 points, 12 rebounds, and four assists on 13 of 16 from the field and five of six from the free throw line. Reeves had missed a couple weeks in November and December due to knee pain, and then would miss another couple weeks in March with knee pain again, as he would end up playing 69 games this year. The Grizzlies again started the year poorly at 4-18, before Hill was fired and replaced with Lionel Hollins. And even though the franchise hit a milestone by surpassing 20 wins for the first time, going 22-60 isn't really an accomplishment. And for the regular season, Reeves put up about 9 points, 5.5 rebounds, and half a block per game. Going into 2001, the Grizzlies had another new coach in Sidney Lowe. Reeves' minutes were at a career low, but he would play 75 games this year, although he rotated between a bench role and starting role throughout the year, as he only started 48 games. But it seemed that Reeves may have found a new role as a sixth man who could also be a serviceable starter when needed, as he was still giving the team solid production in the minutes he was getting. The team got contributions from their new trio of Abdur Rahim, Bibby, and Dickerson, but they didn't have much outside of these three and traded away their 4th best scorer in Othella Harrington mid-season, as overall they would have a bottom 5 scoring offense and bottom 5 scoring defense, en route to a franchise best, but still awful 23-59 record. Reeves would have just 23 games in double figures, but did show improved rebounding, as he recorded 8 double doubles, but for the regular season, he put up about 8.5 points, 6 rebounds, and half a block per game. During the offseason, the Grizzlies were approved for relocation to Memphis, as six very unsuccessful years that saw an already underwhelming fan base in their first year of existence continue to shrink as the years went on was nowhere near enough to keep an NBA franchise alive and profitable. But they were really going for a fresh start, as about a week earlier on draft day, they shipped out Abdur Rahim to the Hawks and Mike Bibby to the Kings. But little did they know, they would also never have Reeves active on an opening roster ever again. During the preseason, Reeves started suffering from significant back pain, which at one point required him to be stretchered off the court during a game, as he was put on the injured list after appearing in just two preseason games. Eventually, Reeves was diagnosed with degenerative discs in his back, and the pain was too much for him to ever return to an NBA court, as he announced his retirement on January 29, 2002, at just 28 years old. Bryant Reeves was forced out of the game earlier than he expected, but it likely wasn't too tough for him to leave it behind, as the spotlight was never something that he wanted. He had accomplished everything he could have asked for, coming from a town of a few hundred people to becoming a college standout and translating that to a respectable NBA career. Was he ever going to be a superstar? Probably not, but he could more than hold his own in the NBA and had an unexpectedly agile offensive game for his size. 
It seems like he can get unnecessary blame for the Grizzlies' relocation, but he's just one man. He may not have reached expectations, but fan attendance, poor team performance, and financial issues related to the dollar's exchange rate definitely played significant parts in the failure of the Grizzlies in Vancouver. Reeves definitely should have been more diligent in his physical fitness, but maybe he has a better career if there's no lockout, and once the weight caused the injuries, the injuries prevented him from keeping off the weight. He may not have been a perfect fit for Vancouver, but Bryant Reeves was still a skilled big man with a likable personality that brought hope and a face to the beginning of a franchise. But that's it for today's episode on Bryant Big Country Reeves. Hope you enjoyed it and make sure to subscribe for more like this. If you like this one, check out this one on his teammate in Vancouver. Or this one on another player expected to be the face of a new franchise. Thanks for watching and see you next time.